Thank you. Um, members, we've one of the things that we talk about in the abstract is exoneration and what does that really mean and who's been there and and that type of thing and it, it's hard to wrap your head around and Mr. Stroud is going to help us uh, wrap our head around that aspect and give us a distinctly different vantage point in that he's a former prosecutor. Mr. Stroud? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> My name's um, Marty Stroud. I've been in the practice of law for 40, 41 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was assistant district, a U.S. attorney in the Western District of Louisiana for six years, the last two of which I was chief of the criminal section. I was also first assistant district attorney in Cattle Parish under Paul Carmouche from 1983 to 1989. I'm here to support the bill to abolish capital punishment. I want to say that I started out my career very much in favor of the death penalty. I believe that it was appropriate for those who committed vicious crimes, such as murder, involving rapes, armed robberies, aggravated kidnapping, killing a policeman. I had no sympathy whatsoever for, for, search, for such criminals and openly criticized those who opposed capital punishment as, quote, being weak on crime. As one of my colleagues said uh, back then, I was a real fire eater. Mercy was not in my vocabulary. Back then, I took that as a, a compliment. Now I take that as a stain. As a state prosecutor, I, I prosecuted capital cases with vigor. One of, <clears throat> one of the men I, I prosecuted was Glenn Ford. Glenn Ford was poor, black, didn't have power, didn't have anybody in his corner. He was charged and convicted of capital murder and we, we obtain, obtained a death verdict. And after the death verdict, Myself and our team went out and celebrated the night away, comfortable with what I had accomplished. There was only one problem. The defendant was not guilty of the crime. He was convicted in 1984. He spent 30 years on death row before he was released. And when he was released, he was given a $20 gift card which stated, for any inconvenience he may have suffered at the hands of the state of Louisiana. <coughs> he lived for shortly for a short period of time after that and died from cancer. During the trial, Glenn Ford took the stand in the penalty phase and testified that he wanted to stay alive so he could prove that the jury was wrong and as a, as a prosecutor I jumped all over that. I chewed him up one side and down the other. How can you say this? Are you saying this jury got it wrong? Why are you saying that? I mocked him. Let me tell you a little about the trial. He was represented by two attorneys who had never tried a case. Speaker Henry talked about the inequities of a, of a case like that. I participated in this inequity. I was narcissistic, I was young, I was full of myself. Glenn Ford never had a chance. No, by the way, uh, just for m good measure, the jury was all white. His wife showed up to testify at the, sen at the sentencing hearing. She got there late. The bailiff said, well, it's already over with. 
And so she turned around and went home. There was a big injustice that was done there. I never doubted at the time that I was right. I never doubted what the police told me. Or I felt back then that the police, if the policeman told me something, I took it hook, line, and sinker. Now, that's not to say I'm anti-police today. There, there are a lot of good policemen out there. The majority of the policemen do their jobs. But it is bad any time that you're in a position of power, of having the authority, especially to take a life, that you question everything that's given to you. I didn't do that. That was my sin. There was other evidence out there that was discovered later on that showed this man did not commit the murder. In fact, in the motion to dismiss the case, the, prosec the, the prosecutor's office said, if we had known the evidence that they knew at the time of the prosecution, he probably wouldn't have been arrested. When I found out about this in 2013, when we had a meeting at the DA's office and I was told about this, I literally got sick at my stomach and went home and threw up. Since that time, and this is not a case about Marty Stroud, this is a case about Glenn Ford. But I think about Glenn Ford every morning when I wake up, and I think about him when I go to bed. <coughs> what the Glenn Ford case taught me is that we human beings cannot handle the power of life and death. We're not designed to do that. That's God's work. I met Glenn Ford. I went to see Glenn Ford and I talked with him. There were a couple of things that he said that uh, I remember this day. He, he first said, well, Mr. Stroud, if I'd had you as my, my attorney, I probably would have gotten off. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but I said, well, you know, you taught me a lesson because do you remember back when you were on the, on, on the stand and you said you wanted to stay alive in order to prove your innocence? I mocked you, and I apologize for that. I said, I asked, I said, you probably can't, but I ask your forgiveness. <clears throat> Mr. Ford said, I can't, I just can't right now. And I said, well, I understand that. I mean, I, 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 you've been through a lot. I wrote a letter to the Shreveport Times. Uh, when I read an article that the state that the state was opposing his request for compensation, there was blowback against him and blowback against me because there was some evidence that he may have pawned a gun that turned out to be the the murder weapon. So that made him guilty of some some crime, and that goes to show you. I think a prime example of how a poor person doesn't have a chance. He was living in the ghetto. He had an opportunity. If somebody gave him a gun and he could sell it to buy food, he did it. That didn't mean he was a principal to murder. But the state denied him compensation. And in a hearing on the compensation stat stat uh, statute last year there was some pretty nasty things said about him still about uh, his involvement in the case and the man was dead from cancer in the grave and the state was still <coughs> on his case thank you I don't uh, just, yeah I don't wish what 
I went through on anybody else. Um, all I know is when I looked Mr. Ford in the eye and he looked in my eyes and he was dying, I said, and, and we, it was silence and he said, Mr. Stroud, I want you to know that I did not commit that offense. There was, and I'll, I'll finish with this, Mr. Chairman. I saw, and maybe some of the others saw this. There was an article in the Shreveport Times on Sunday where the mother of Haley Owens asked prosecutors to drop death penalty. You probably remember this legislature passed the Haley Bill about notification of victims when there's a sex offender that's, that's out there. Um, her daughter was killed, 10-year-old daughter was raped and killed. And she wrote the prosecutor and let a letter, and I think this says a, a lot about, I mean, she is the, a victim. I am writing to request your mercy, Barfield wrote, mercy for me, for my family, and for the memory of my daughter, Haley Owens. She, she was writing to the prosecutor. You have the power to end my suffering, she continued. Please accept a plea deal for life without the possibility of parole for Craig Wood's case. Then I can focus on rebuilding my life. I don't want to go through the trial because I don't want to relive the nightmare. I'm never going to be over it, but just re-seeing it is going to make it 10 times worse. I uh, know at some point that I'm going to have to answer. Uh, I, I, I hope when the time comes, God has more mercy on me than I did Mr. Ford. But I really don't deserve it. <laughs>